he's using something else, right? That's a problem. That's a massive problem because is God the creator or not? And if he is, does he uphold all things by the word of his power or not? Is the co-creation his or not? Is he Lord or not? Good morning, everybody. I'm Richard. Welcome to Contra Thoughts. We've got some liars on our hands. Well, just one. Right. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Um, good morning. Hope you're having a wonderful day so far, uh, whenever you're watching this. This is Contra Thoughts. This is my podcast talking about church stuff, things in the culture, um, Big Eva, CNN, when they talk about Bible stuff. I could talk about anything. I try not to just talk about anything because I don't want to be all over the place. Uh, but I appreciate you spending some time uh, with me, taking taking a little bit of time out of your day. I know you could be doing 10 other things, 20 other things, and probably thinking about a couple things while I say these words, uh, as we all do. But I appreciate the time. Thank you so much. We've got Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth Copeland. He is a vowed prosperity gospel, heretic, all-around zany guy. I haven't really paid attention to him much over the years. It's really been kind of the 10-foot pole sort of thing. But I know he exists, right? And well, he said something recently, and I want to just look at it and really... <clears throat> and, and, and I want us to look at the substance, not just him, because again, this is the guy that, you know, has the bug eyes and talks about this and that and threatening reporters. If you've seen that clip from a number of years ago about, you know, how he bought a jet and God had to have him have the jet and, you know, talking about how God's one of the biggest losers because he lost a third of the host of heaven and uh, Jesus was meek and mild and, and, and getting beat up in hell after the cross. And I mean, the, it's just... I mean, it's like he's trying. He's trying to be like the best heretic. Like it's it's just anyway. There's a clip that I'll play. It's a very short clip. I don't know when this is, but his theology is that of many others, like Pat Robertson, who's even older than him, who's just as much. He's a little softer around the edges on the heretic side, but he's still very much a heretic. Uh, just teaching prosperity gospel, teaching people's feelings, looking for the only here and now. Uh, and I would wager that many other false teachers and heretics, because there's a false teacher, I think is the first step where you're teaching falsely, but if people come and correct you or say, Hey, you know, brother, that's not right. Uh, you probably shouldn't be doing that. Or, Oh, you, you had a false teaching. I'm sure there's some, there's certain things that I've said in the pulpit and, and even on this podcast that haven't been true. Okay. Hey, let me push back a little bit. I disagree. And sometimes it's opinion. Sometimes it is doctrine. Um, I hope I try not to do that. But heretics are people seeking to divide off with false teaching. That's how I understand a number of people kind of look at look at it similar that way as well. Again, that's a human definition, but we are humans, right? So that being said, let's play this clip and just real, real short, like I said. And we're just going to just look at what he says and go from there. The fossil record doesn't lie. There's an enormous amount of time between Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. Enormous. He didn't create this world in six days. Okay, so he didn't create this world in six days. Now, I understand there's some Christians who disagree, and uh, there's differences of opinion about Genesis 1 and 2, and there's a gap, and there's theological... Um, uh, progressive creation and uh, theistic evolution. I, I, I've honestly I've studied that for quite some time, uh, off and on over the last decade or more, and so I'm very well aware of the differences of belief. Now, to in a sense that overlaps with this, but in a sense it doesn't. And it's kind of hard to hear. I hope the audio is not too bad. It's a little rough because it's like. A recording back anyway. Um, what does he say? He says the fossil record doesn't lie. Now he's referring to number one. He's referring to something other than the scripture, right? So he's using something in creation and says, "Yeah, this is the truth." 
I know the Bible says this, but this is the truth. That's number one, the biggest, biggest problem, biggest red flag. And if you have that, and honestly, that's why part of the reason why I do this channel is to help you um, be discerning, to understand this is what the text says, and this is what the world says. And sometimes they overlap. A lot of times they do. A lot of times they don't. I mean, the world right now says, you know, boys and girls can be any gender they want. They can, they say that marriage is anything you want it to be or almost anything. They say that a baby isn't really a baby. Science, the world used to say that the earth is flat. No, I don't believe the earth is flat. If you're a skeptic, Christian, uh, a skeptic or a non-Christian or whatever watching this, great. Welcome, welcome. Um, but I'm trying to be biblical. I'm trying to do this, not just because I like the Bible, quote unquote, more than other things, but because I love Jesus. And I love the author behind the Bible, not just the words themselves, the black ink on the, on the page. And so he's using something else, right? That's a problem. That's a massive problem because is God the creator or not? And if he is, does he uphold all things by the word of his power or not? Is the co-creation his or not? Is he Lord or not? Well, Copeland right there and we know, at least you might know, much of the rest of his theology doesn't believe any of that. And I don't know if this belief about, oh, the fossil record is king, the fossil record doesn't lie. I don't know when that started for him. I would be curious. It was probably pretty early on. Because you're taking the Bible, and all he does is kind of pony up to the buffet of the Bible, or treating it such, and just picking and choosing what he likes and what he doesn't. I mean, the guy is worth millions of dollars. Now, I'm not saying millions of dollars is necessarily bad, but money is the root of all kinds of evil. Not all evil, but all kinds of evil. And it's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God, the Lord Jesus told us. So money is a problem for many people. Joel Osteen, T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar, a lot of these other guys all do that. And I would guess that they do not have a very robust understanding of the doctrine of creation, the theology behind God being the creator and what that means. So he says, number one, the fossil record doesn't lie. You're right. And I'll agree with him here. The fossil record doesn't lie. Just like my cup. It doesn't lie. Why? Because this is just a thing. Men lie. Women lie. People lie. And people have lied about the fossil record for quite some time. Now, it's a fairly new advancement, and I'm not really going to look too much into it uh, here. But it's basically the Bible for secularists, for atheists, for people, geologists, astronomers, biologists. They look to it and say, oh, look at all these dead things and all these layers that have been buried here for who knows how long. Oh, it must be millions of years. you know. And they use the layer and date. They find a fossil and they date the layer. And then they find a layer and then they date a fossil. And they basically, what they do is use circular reasoning. They use index fossils, which they've decided this one at the bottom is older than this one at the top. <clears throat> and then they say, well, the layer based on this, because it's all uniformitarianism, big long word for what is happening now has always happened, right? Tornadoes, erosions, floods, earthquakes, very, 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 very slow process. And since nothing's happening now, there's no evolution happening now, we must then conclude that this has never happened before. Well, again, that's another problem because you weren't there. You believe it by faith that these things happened. The secularist has just as much faith or more than the Christian. Actually, I would say more because they don't have a real Bible. <laughs> they don't have a transcendent God who knows all things, upholds all things, and is in every time and space at once, right? Lest we forget, and so often we have such a low view of God, even as Christians, we have such a low view of God. So I would challenge you, if you have a problem with this, okay, great, that's the whole point, being contra mundum. I'm against it, against the world particular, and this idea, but for the world, pro mundo. It's the Latin, fancy Latin, against the world, for the world. And so I'm against this and against these things, but for his sake. Now, he's not going to change most likely, but you might or your friend. I've had several Christians, oh, yeah, old earth. Eh. No, the, the Bible doesn't teach this. It doesn't. I mean, I, I'm, I'm confident to stand on that. It doesn't teach this. 
that the view comes from somewhere else. But who's teaching that? That view did not come from the scripture. It comes from the world. So that should be your your number one. <laughs> it's the second point. But your number one reason to question it, right? Because the world also says you can't make fish and bread from nothing. You can't walk on water. And certainly you can't raise from the dead. Oh, well, I believe Jesus rose from the dead. Why? Well, because the Bible tells me so. Well, the Bible also tells you about creation, doesn't it? The Bible also tells you that in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, so he says that the fossil record doesn't lie. You're right. People lie. People lie. The fossil record is most certainly there because of a global catastrophe, a global flood, which happens a few chapters into Genesis 6 through 9 in particular. But if you deny this, then you deny a global flood. Many do this. Biologos, terrible ministry, don't follow them. They deny the scripture left and right, not just about creation, but all sorts of other things. But Tim Keller, oh, ding, ding, ding. And many other bigwig guys, um, what's his face? The other guy in the headlines now, uh, Harris, not Harris, um, the guy that just retired. Oh, dear. Francis Collins, Obama appointed NIH, National Institute of Health, the guy who's, you know, supporting LGBT stuff, this and that, this and that. You know, wear your mask. This is a health device, that whole thing. Pandering to Russell Moore and Russell Moore pandering to him and Tim Keller and all these other guys. They're the and this is the thing. Theology matters and it works itself out. So doctrine in your mind works itself out in orthopraxy. So orthodoxy, doctrine, it's a little doxy doctrine, right? Works itself out in orthopraxy, practice. Know that, please. And know if it's your pastor or somebody at your Bible college or even you, maybe your your dad, your wife, your friend, your neighbor, and they have these beliefs or these actions. Why do they have these actions? Well, because of these other things that precede it, okay? No one just all of a sudden says, yeah, a baby's not really a baby, right? A baby is, is just a lump of cells. Yeah, anybody can, anybody can get married. Uh, you know, orientation. Well, uh, this and that. You need to listen to the government at all costs. Really? Isn't Jesus Lord, though? So, where do we get this verse, though? Well, Genesis is what he's talking about. Genesis 2 in particular. I don't I don't like the chapter break, by the way, between 1 and 2, but anyway. Talks about six days, creating man on the sixth day, the last day. Heaven and the earth were finished. This is Genesis 2, verse 1. And this is the message, by the way. The most paraphrased, most, I don't want to call it liberal, but it's not literal at all, okay? It's a paraphrase. It's to read for devotion. It was interpreted and written by one guy, uh, Eugene Peterson. I'm not castigating it. I'm just saying, like, if, it, if you're going to read it, fine. But you have to have several other versions with it, too, okay? Heaven and earth were finished down to the last detail. By the seventh day, God had finished his work. On the seventh day, he rested from all his work. God blessed the seventh day and he made it holy because on the day he rested from all his work from God creating, all creating God had done. This is the story of how it all started, of the heaven and the earth when they were created. So that wraps up Genesis 1 and 2. But he says, well, you know, it's six, he didn't really create in six days. Based on what? Based on the fossil record. Based on something that man says. They say, look up and say, oh, look at these dinosaur bones. Therefore, we're God, you're not, you're wrong. And that's always what it is. It's always, I want to refute the Bible. At least in my, my experience. Like I said, I've studied this and paid attention to lectures and debates and articles for, what year is it? 2022? 15 years, honestly. It was actually part of my own testimony, even before I was a Christian. And the Lord using this. Now, it didn't save me. You can believe these things and hear me clearly. You can believe these things and still be a follower of Christ. I'm just saying you're being really inconsistent. And it can be dangerous if you say, well, I believe this more than the Bible. I believe these things more than the Bible. Because the, the world, this, also says you can't rise from the dead. Right? That's the whole point in Jesus. That's why a lot of people, the Bill Mars of the world and others like that, don't, they have a problem with Christianity, the scripture. Because people don't rise from the dead. Joe Rogan, you know, he's all in the news lately. Of course they don't rise from the dead. Joe, 
That's what makes it so amazing. That's what makes Jesus so wonderful. Duh. <laughs> like, Joe, sorry, man. Sorry you're getting canceled and all that other stuff. And now you're bowing and whatever. I'm not talking, I'm not going to talk about it. I, I thought about it. But that's like, but they want this, it's this naturalism, right? And this this view that you can see. Anyway. Exodus 20, verse 11, for in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. For in six days, excuse me, he set it apart, right? Another, that was the NIV. For in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth and sea and all that is in them. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. This is in the Ten Commandments. Why? Why? Because right before this, in verse 10, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day to the Lord. You shall not do any work. Livestock, sojourner with you, etc. And he says, why? Because God created in six days and rested on the seventh day. Exodus 34, 31. I mean, just type Sabbath into your favorite Bible app and look at this. Sabbath is the seventh day. It's Saturday, by the way. It's on Sunday. It didn't change. That's another thing. Um, Luke 13. Verse 14, but in the synagogue leader was indignant that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath for six days there are for work, he told the crowd. So come and be healed on those days, but not on the Sabbath. Right? So we know Israel, the people who are receiving Genesis first and foremost, sort of Hebrew people in particular, Moses is writing it. And they say, six days, rested on the seventh day. It's not that hard. Right. And this is a very new, new thing in the in creation or in the doctrine of the church. Now, there have been a few people who super mythologize stuff. I'm actually reading a really good book right now. It's not here uh, on the historical Adam. And he does catalog early church fathers and medieval and then reformers. And so I'm only on like chapter four or five, something like that. Anyway, it's a really great book, and he has lots and lots of very scholarly, but it's very, very helpful. Now, Origen, the church father, and a few others, they were very popular in mystical, mysticizing a lot of things in the scripture. Now, he had some old earthy, old cosmos views. So I'm not going to say it's brand, brand new, but by and large, the mass uh, majority of the church scholars, church fathers, theologians, and so on, believe that God created in six days and rested on the seventh day. It's funny, actually, and the reformers thought, it. why did he take so long? You know, the Calvins and the Luthers and those guys. Like, why did God take six days? Isn't he powerful enough to create like that? Jonathan Edwards believed something different, that God was constantly recreating. That's wrong. Uh, see, everybody's wrong. There's, there's Everybody's wrong about some things, <laughs> including me, I'm sure. But I'm standing on the scripture. On this one, I'm confident I'm not wrong. Again, I could be, and the Lord could correct me. But I'm using the Bible. I'm not using other things. And as a Christian, you want to use the Bible and not other things. Now, if you want to believe and have faith in the world and not Christ, well, fine. Yeah, I understand why you want to believe this. I understand why you want to believe in six days isn't really this, and the fossil record's really that, and the earth and creation is... Uh, billions of years old. Okay, I understand that. But you're believing it by faith because you weren't there, right? No one was there except God. But if God doesn't exist, then, well, he wasn't there either. And there is no God and there is no resurrection from the dead. So we should eat, drink, and tomorrow we die because it doesn't matter. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15. So Sabbath is all over the scripture. Lots and lots and lots and lots of places. Hebrews 4 And we'll wrap up with this. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest, Sabbath, still stands, let us fear, lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For good news came to us, just as to them. But the message they heard did not benefit them, because they were not united by faith with those who listened. For we who have believed enter that rest. And he said, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Quoting the Old Testament. Although his works were finished from the foundation of the world... And he said somewhere spoken of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works, quote. And again in the passage said, they shall not enter my rest. Since therefore, verse six, it says, it remains for some to enter it, and those who formerly received the good news fail to enter because of unbelief. 
because of disobedience. <coughs> and that's really the, the hinge, isn't it? Because of unbelief, because of disobedience. People don't like God telling them what to do. Even Christians, right? We don't, we don't like rules. We want to be free, do whatever we want to do. But the difference is we've been bought with a price and now our master is Christ and not Satan, <laughs> right? He loves us. Satan says, oh, do whatever you want because he hates us. Christ says, you don't get to do whatever you want because you're not your own. I bought you. But you, what I get and give to you and what I want for you is exponentially better. Because ultimately, we don't even know our own selves. We don't even know our own heart. The point in all this is don't use, do not use, I challenge you, do not use things in the world that say, well, this is this. Therefore, the Bible's wrong. Therefore, this doctrine is incorrect. Therefore, blah, blah, blah. People do it with creation, and those people will then take it you know, now they're in prosperity or they'll take it and they'll wave the rainbow flag or they'll take it and they'll say, eh, murdering babies, that's not that big of a deal. Child abuse, eh, you know, slavery, well, uh, slavery is bad. You know, and they'll still talk about things like racism being bad, but they don't care much about, you know, actually feeding the poor or actually helping immigrants or actually doing these other things. They talk about it, but they never do it. The point is, once you start breaking down and you start crumbling, your foundation is eroding. It's, it's eventually all going to come down. It's all going to come down. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, give me that three-piece special. As one of my buddies tells it, like, a share, and a comment. If you haven't subbed, please do so. Um, again, it, the almighty algorithm pushes it out and uh, it gets it out to more people because ultimately I want to do this and I'm doing this to call people to the scripture, to call people to Christ. So again... Have a great day. Be contramundo pro mundo. We'll see you on Monday. I'm going to do a special video on Monday, so look for that. Take care.